Guys, so I've got another HBX Devastator. So I've unboxed one of these before on the channel and this is actually my favorite indoor crawler, but it is quite expensive. So in this video, we're gonna have a look to see why this is more expensive over some of the other stuff that you can buy. So over here, we have a couple of RC crawlers that are a lot, lot cheaper. These are sort of designed for indoor use as well. I'm gonna put a link down below to all of these crawlers here. In this video, we're gonna sort of set up a little obstacle course and just sort of compare the difference to see why this one is so much more expensive than these two cheap ones. You want to make some extra cash so you can buy more toys, quit your job, go on more holidays, or maybe build a monster truck. I've got you covered. Check out my course in the description and I'll show you how to make 100k profit a year. So at a first glance, they may all look fairly similar. So you may be wondering what warrants this one being so much more expensive. So starting off on this one here, this one's actually got a metal body. It's definitely the biggest out of them all. But the feel of it, it just kind of feels really toy-like. We can see the motors are actually built into the axle housings. And it's just got a very much sort of toy feel to it with a radio, with a car and everything. This one here, pretty much the same. It's just a lot smaller. So same on this, we've got the motors on the axles. And it's just got a very toy sort of like feel to it. Then moving on to the Devastator, this one here is full hobby grade. So we have a look underneath. We've got the motor on the chassis with the gearbox. Two drive shafts going into some real axles. And just the whole feel of this, I mean, it might be difficult to show on the video. But this sort of feels like a proper RC model. Whereas these ones here just feel like a proper toy. Even the radio in the hand, the look of it, everything. And more will become apparent. When we test them. So I'm going to charge them all up and then we're going to take them out for a little blast. So to charge up the Devastator, they've slightly changed it now over the previous model. They've made it a lot easier to charge the batteries. You just plug this into there and the other end into a USB port. So for the radio, you have to supply your own AA batteries. But other than that, it comes with everything you need to get it to run. So to charge up the other two, exactly the same. So we've got a USB charger and a battery. Same on this one, USB charger, battery. So exactly the same setup as that one pretty much. Just on this one, the battery is built in. On these ones, the batteries fit underneath here and you've got to unscrew this little cover. So there you go, they're all charged up. They're all ready to go. So we're going to set up some different obstacles and see what they are made of. Expensive one first, steering wise. Look, you can steer a little bit, you can steer a lot. So depending how far you move the steering wheel, is dependent on how far the wheel steers. So you can go all the way, and you can go just like a little bit. The more you steer, just like on the real car. The same with the throttle, you can go really slow, and then when you nail it, the speed is kind of controlled by how far you pull the trigger. Then, we have this button here. So we hit this, and now look, we have four wheel steering. And just to give you an example of what four wheel steering does, so this is full turning cycle with the front steering only. Yeah, it doesn't even make it round. So now we bring it back to the same position, four wheel steer. Check that out. It makes that turning circle so much tighter. So I've got another Devastator here. This one here is the old one. And I've done a couple of little modifications. So the first one you've already seen is the charging port. On that one there, the charging port's there. On this one here, it's sort of tucked all the way in the back here. And then when it comes to switching it on, this one's got a handy little button here. You just press the button, that turns it on. On this one here, the switch is buried all the way up in there. And you can't really reach it unless you've got a little finger. You know what that means when you've got little hands. Uh, or if you take the body off, you can get to it that way. So all in all, a nice little revision. Now there's a couple of upgrades that I'll do to these. That are actually free, doesn't cost anything. But if you move this steering linkage down, you get more steering. You can do that front and rear. And also, I like to lower the body slightly. So here's one where I've lowered the body on and done the steering modification look. And here is one that's just stock. So next we have the Red Devil. So size-wise, there's probably not much in it between these two. So these are probably going to be the fairest comparison. This one here is a little bit taller. It's a little bit shorter, slightly narrower. But when we steer, it's just all or nothing. Look, you can't, you can't just steer a little bit like you can on the other one. There's no rear wheel steering. It's just fixed. And then the same on the accelerator. When you, when you throttle, it's either all or nothing. Look, so nothing, 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 nothing. And then it shoots off flat out. And it's exactly the same with this one here. This one here is obviously a lot bigger, but I thought I might as well chuck it into the mix as well, just so you can see. Now, I am actually expecting this one to get over bigger obstacles just, be just because the car's bigger. So in this one, the same. 
steering is all or nothing. And the same when you accelerate, it's just, it's just going back and that's it. There's no, you can't just crawl it slowly. So next we have the hill climb challenge. So we're gonna start off on 43 degrees and we're gonna see which one can do it best. So let's start off with the little bloke, the little guy. Oh. Oh, he can't do it. Ah. All right, next. Oh, so there you go, all or nothing, you can't crawl it. Oh, but he's making it up. But when you let go of the throttle, it just goes straight away down again, look. All right, so this one can do it. Next, let's try the Devastator. So here we go, so now we can crawl really slowly, look. Really creep it. Right, need a little bit of speed over that. Right, there we go. So look, we can go slow, and then we can go fast. And it holds it as well, look, where it's geared nicely. It just holds it in place. I wonder if we could, if we're careful, if we can turn it round on the slope. Hey, there we go. All right, let's make it a bit steeper and see what the limit is. 50 degrees. <laughs> Still easy, but starting to lift a wheel. 52. Oh, and he's still going. Check that out. It's still going. You can see little drive shafts in there turning. Look. Let's do rear steering. So let's try this one once more. <laughs> no chance. So we got a clear win for the Devastator. Second place, we have the Off-Road. And last and least, the Red Devil. So first obstacle, we have a box full of tools. And this is an obstacle that most small crawlers usually struggle with. So I'm gonna try going up it straight on first. Oh, and we're hooked up here, look. But sometimes if we take this sort of stuff at an angle, it's going to help us get up it. Oh, there we go. So next, let's try it with the Red Devil. Come on, Red Devil. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we've got the front end on. Ah, oh, so close. No, you can't, you can't quite make it. Let's try it at an angle. Ah, come on. No, I think I think he's got no hope on that one. No. Nope. Ah, eh. oh, he gets off it. Next, we have the off-road. It's quite fast and it's very difficult to try and go slow. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, and he makes it with a run-up. So I would definitely give it to this one here for control. But well, this one still did it with a run-up. So next, we've got a little bit of an obstacle course here. Uh, actually, another mode on this one here, look. So I've already showed you the four-wheel steer, but if we hit this button again, we can do crab crawl like this. So basically, I mean, you can drive down the road like that. And if we hit it again, we can have it set at rear steer only. This is my favorite mode. So let's try it first on that mode and see what happens. So you've got plenty of suspension travel in this, plenty of articulation, and the gearing is really nice and low, so you can really crawl it slowly. You can pick your line. I'm gonna try and get it up on top of that X-Max tire there. So now we could hit that crab steer button. So we can try and get it up on there diagonally. Sometimes it can help. Oh, look at that. Now we're on. Now we can put it back to normal steering mode. So now we're front steering only. Boom. So next, the red devil probably got no hope, but you never know. We can't crawl this, it's all or nothing. 
Oh, we got over the first bit. Oh, kind of. Come on, at least get up onto that bit. Oh! Oh, he's made it up onto that bit. Oh, and he's stuck. All right, let's nail it and see if we can hop up. Ah, oh, no, oh. Oh, so close, come on, come on. So close. All right, let's cheat. Oh, and he still makes it over. Come on, come on, come on, you can do it. Yes. Ah, oh, just gets speech on the wood at the last minute, but good effort. It actually still does get over some fairly rough terrain. It's just some of the bigger stuff it struggles on. But it's, it still does it. You can still have fun with it. <laughs> oh, look, it's even got headlights. Next, the off-road. I'm guessing this with a run-up will probably do it. <laughs> and he actually got straight over. This thing that is actually getting over the stuff. I mean, it's not really fair because it is a lot bigger. <laughs> Tumble bumble. And you can't really go slow because look, as soon as it clicks in, it just goes flat out. <laughs> it gets over it though. I mean, you can't really pick your line. There's not really much sort of skill there. It's just nailing it and hoping for the best, but I'm actually surprised. <laughs> Look at that. It's actually surprising me how well it's actually doing. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Let's see if the Devastator can get over it that way. I mean, the thing is with this, it's a lot smaller. It's a lot slower. So with this, you've got to use your skill to get over the obstacles. Rear steer. Oh, there we go. The thing is with this, where the axles are in the way, you can be strategic of where you place your wheels. Oh, we're trying to do it one-handed and it makes it a little bit more difficult. So there we go, we've got a bit of a better line there now. We really have to sort of think a little bit of where we pick our route with this. Oh, there we go. But I am actually impressed with this. As I said, I know it's a lot bigger. So it's bound to help it. But I mean, for a cheapo and definitely toy grade, it actually isn't that bad. I mean, even this one's not bad. I mean, the idea of this video is not to say that these toys are bad. You know, these are obviously a lot, lot cheaper. The idea of this video is just to show you that when you spend a little bit more money on stuff, what you're actually getting for your money. Because this here at a first glance does look relatively expensive. There's gonna be a link to this down below and also all these other ones. But when you actually look at the technology and engineering under there, we've got two servos, we've got a proper transmission. Uh, it, it's sort of clear why this costs a lot more than So next we have the book section. I already know that this one can do it because I've done it before. So I'm gonna go for front steering only because I don't want the rear steer kicking it off. We can go nice and slow. Just creep it over all the obstacles. All right, the last section. There we go, made it all the way to the end. Next, the Red Devil. No, but this is all or nothing, so it's gonna be a bit harder. All right, we're stuck. Oh no, he's getting stuck. The only way to kind of do it is to blip it. Oh. There's not much torque there, so you've got to kind of take a run up to get it over things. Oh! Oh, and he's done it. Next, we have the big one. Bit too big, really. It only barely fits on there. Oh. Oh. Oh, poor old car dome's getting destroyed. Tumble wumble. All right, I'm not gonna bother trying it again. It's not doing me books any good. Next, we have the sofa challenge. I've got the rear wheel steering on again now just to help it on the turn. Sofa 
So far, easy. I'm hoping on this piece here, it's not going to fall forward. Ah! 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 Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. And I think we're going to have to do the same again when we get down to here. But this bit here is even steeper by the looks of it. Is he going to pull it off? Oh, it's sliding. You try and come off there as slowly as possible. And once it drops, nail it. Ah, not quite. Uh-oh. What happened? All right, back in action. I always made it over that bit, but now the lack of steering is making it difficult to manoeuvre. Oh, the steering hasn't got the power to... All right, all right, I'm gonna cheat, otherwise I'm gonna run out of film and you lot are gonna get bored. So I think this one here is gonna be the same. It's gonna definitely tumble. I think that happened before actually. It's not a big deal. That will push back in. Fixed it. This one's probably gonna struggle because it's not gonna fit up the top here, but we'll give it a go anyway. Ah! Oh, <laughs> All right, so it would make it, but I mean, it's a bigger car. As we said before, it's not really fair to use this one. It's bigger tires, helps it over the bigger obstacles, but it also is a hindrance when it comes up to these tighter sections. But I'm guessing it's going to get down here a lot easier, just because of its longer wheelbase. Hey, oh, I nearly made it. So one more thing worth noting is that the Devastator, you can buy all the spare parts. So if you break it, and all RC cars break at some point, uh, then you can buy all the spare parts. And if you cannot find the parts for the Devastator, then FTX make one exactly the same. It's called the Ibex, and all of those parts will fit. So you can get spare drive shafts, spare springs, spare everything. Uh, but by the way, the axles on these are actually very, very tough. So here's a grave digger that I built using the axles from one of these. And this has got a brushless motor in there. We've been jumping it, uh, skidding it around. And so far, these axles have actually taken the abuse perfectly. So overall, I hope you guys can see now why this one here is a lot more expensive, you know, by how more capable it is, by the better equipment that you get on there. But of course, you can still have some fun with the cheaper stuff. So if you've got a kid, you maybe want to get them into the hobby just to see if they like it. Maybe you could get them something like this one first, see how they get on with that, and then you could sort of upgrade them later on to maybe something like this and then if they stick with a hobby you could then upgrade it to something like one of these sort of proper crawlers like what you see here and sometimes i see people complain they say kev you shouldn't be promoting these ch this cheap chinese stuff because it's going to put the local model shops and it's going to put all these brand names like traxxas and armor it's going to put them all out of business and then we've all got no shops to go to and although i do see the point uh, that's not really quite what I've seen. Uh, a lot of the time, some of this cheaper stuff is an entry point into the hobby. And often it gets new people into the hobby that otherwise wouldn't. Because some of this branded stuff, the price is like sort of three, four times more expensive uh, than some of the cheaper stuff. And it's just too expensive for somebody that's never been into the hobby to kind of get involved with it. But they get something cheaper and they get hooked onto the hobby and then their next car often is one of the brand name ones. And then they start going to hobby shops, they start buying more stuff. So yes, I can see why some people say that it's a bad thing to get these cheap things, uh, but it's really not what I've seen. So, you know, if it gets more people into the hobby, then surely that's a good thing for everybody. By the way, if you want to see more about this Gravedigger build, there's going to be a link up here where I'll show you exactly how you can build your own. But anyway, for this video, that is it. And I will see you over in another video in a minute.